The Super Speedway Podcast is a Dream Bigger Media production. For news, photos, show notes, and information about advertising on the podcast, visit www.thesuperspeedway.com. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Super Speedway. Welcome to episode 94 of the Super Speedway Podcast, recorded Thursday, February 7, 2019. I'm your host, Eric Young. And I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, James Cush. James, how is it going today? Eric, we've got racing this week. (laughs) I know. Cars are on the track. I know. I'm going to be so screwed up Saturday because I have Supercross to watch. I have the, the Clash to watch. And I have a hockey game that I'm taking pictures at all at the same time because this is the first East Coast Supercross. So I will be using the DVR while our YouTube TV is recording features um and possibly my cell phone to catch up on stuff so it's gonna be busy <laughs> yeah yeah you're gonna have uh you're gonna have to send the kids away yeah i already told the yeah. wife that i i have to uh she has to drive home next sunday because we, we have a thing with the boys for for hockey up in petoskey so two hours away so she has to drive home so i can watch the daytona 500 in the car <laughs> <laughs> i like it yeah i don't know if that's gonna work out but that was my plan <laughs> I like it. No, I mean, that's, I mean, living in 2019 has its privileges and that is one right there. Exactly. Long car rides are much shorter when you've got good, good old fashioned entertainment. Well, we're looking to, we're looking to upgrade to the unlimited data plan on uh, on the old Verizon. So I won't have to worry about using up all my data watching the race. So yeah, heck yeah. You can have it streaming on like four screens. Yeah. You'd be all set. We'll see how it goes. (laughs) I like it. So, yeah, we got racing this week. Uh, we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but we do have a little bit of news in the NASCAR world. World? World? Ward Burton suddenly came on the, on the podcast. That was Ward. <laughs> Ward. Ward Burton. All right. Uh, big news. I didn't bury the lead this week, James. I didn't go in order of announcements. I went with the number one thing up top, which I am so excited about. It this This year, beginning this year, NASCAR will start disqualifying drivers if they violate the rules and win the race. I think this is the greatest thing that NASCAR has done in the last 10 years. I was so excited to send you the text because I knew you were a bit. When did that news come out? It was, it was, it was Monday, right? Now. Pro- yeah, I'm, I'm in production Monday and Tuesday yeah. for the paper. Yeah, so. you were, I knew you were busy. And I, all I texted you was your dream has come true. I immediately had to drop everything I did and go to NASCAR.com. I couldn't go to Jayski because jayski has gone, which I didn't even add that. And we'll have to talk about that in the news too. Um, but, uh, but I went to NASCAR.com and checked it out and I was, I was thrilled. <laughs> yes. What do you yeah, think it, about it, James? I, I, I think my opinion on it is pretty obvious, but uh, yeah, well, it's think? well, it's well, it's time. Yeah. It's well overdue. And I, you know, I, and I think that with the whole betting thing coming in, this year uh being illegal i think this is a little bit of a reaction to that as well could be because you don't want the book you know the sports books and things like that dealing with you know they did like kevin harvick at texas last year well did he really win or right or what you know so um no this is good this is long overdue it's the right thing to do um because you know, we've said it a million times on this podcast. You go to your local short track. If you're illegal, you're illegal. You're yep, out. Exactly. Ask Scott. Ask Scott Bloomquist. Yeah. Uh, about Eldora. <laughs> yep. You know, he fin- he crossed the line first. Doesn't mean doesn't mean he won. So. Yep. If if um, you allow time. somebody to keep the win, even if they don't keep the money or the points, if you allow somebody to keep the win by cheating, then you're endorsing cheating. Yes. And we shouldn't be doing that. And I think this will hopefully. Hopefully get rid of that. I think there's going to be a lot of consequences. There's already consequences with sponsors when something like this happens, but it's going to look a lot worse if you get busted. And I I guarantee you, I would say within the first 10 races, we see it happen once. Yeah. Somebody's going to push the line and hopefully they're set. The the example set and everybody gets the hint and they knock it off. So um, if you've been sleeping under a rock for the last week or so, I'll give you a little explanation how it works. So if, the, the, the first three or the first two cars will go to post-race tech inspection, which it will not be done at the R and D center anymore. Um, it will be done at the track. They said it'll take 90 minutes to two hours to complete the inspection. Um, they'll make a final determination there. If either of it, it'll be the top two cars and a random car. I saw today that the expectation is the random car will be the third place car, but it doesn't have to be. Um, 
so when they say random car by the way quote unquote yeah let, let's say brad kozlowski is really fast one week right. and has a late spin and finishes 20th or something yeah he's gonna be your random car exactly <laughs> it's gonna be like that yep so if if one of those drivers does not pass inspection they will get last place points um, they're not allowed to take all the points away because the charter agreement, apparently, uh, in the charter agreement, they are not allowed to make it like they're not there for the weekend. So they have to get a point. So they will get one point for last place finish. Um, let's see. Like I said, first place, second place, random driver. I think that pretty much covers it. If, if you're busted, you're, you're done. You're, you, you lose the points. Yeah. So, yeah, and I was I was reading some stuff this week, and, and one uh, one crew chief I can't recall who it was, but they they had said this really is it's not about the post race tech that that NASCAR is really trying to get at here, it's the pre race tech. They right. want these cars to be as legal as possible before the drop of the green flag. That makes sense. And and after the race, so be it. You know. Right. Um. But you should be getting getting through tech as legal as legally as possible now. So. Yep. Uh, yeah, this is good, man. This is this is going to be, uh, you know, whoever that first person that I, I do feel bad for the first person that gets busted because <laughs> they are going to get the brunt of the they're going to get the brunt of the, uh, you know, the news media. And after after that, it'll drop off a little bit. But right. Once it becomes commonplace, it won't be such a big deal. But this year it's going to be a big deal. Yeah. Um, just to clarify, too, if, if let's say the first place driver is found to be illegally gets last place points, finishes last then the second place driver becomes the winner and that's your winner. Right. So you could, you could finish third in the race. If the top two guys come back yep. illegal, you won. Yeah. And it's not just for the winner too. I mean, like you said, it's the second place driver too. Yep. If second place is illegal. They go down yep. and, and the field moves up. Yep. So the only thing that concerns me is a circumstance where all three of the cars come back illegal. And then what do they do? Yeah. Cause I technically the yeah. third place guy would get the, the win and his car wouldn't have been tacked. I, I really don't think that we're going to see too many of these guys be. I think maybe we'll get one or two this year, maybe three. Because uh, if you look back at the last few years of the cars that have been dinged really bad for being illegal. Right. It's only been a handful of guys. You know, Logano had an encumbered win. Um, Harvick had the windshield last year and Texas. So, yeah, I we'll see. I I don't think it's going to be a huge thing, but we're, somebody's going to get dinged. We, right. we, we, we will have We will have guys going to the back of the – back of the finishing order also the cars will still be inspected at the r&d center as well to explore trends um gray areas etc cetera, etc cetera. Yep. Um, elton sawyer who is the vice president of officiating technical technical inspection said there is still a potential for penalties from the r&d center but it's not as can't likely a, be, yeah they can't take your race position away right it's also not as likely because they're more than likely going to find the major things well, at the track exactly and, and what they said too is if we find something we really don't like we're going to bring it to the track and we're going to tell everybody you can't do this. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is they're going to, when they find something too, I, I saw they're going to confiscate the part on the spot. So I believe that applies to pre-race inspection and stuff too. So unlike before where I think they could send it back and work on it. Now mm -hmm. they just take it. Yep. So that's interesting as well. So again, trying to a set an example and, and I guess show people exactly what they shouldn't be doing. Um, keep the secrecy out of it a little bit and just trying to get rid of this, this crap that we had last year was ridiculous. We talked about penalties way too much last season. Yes, it was, we did. It was just yep. too much. Yep. So the drivers and teams put them in this. Well, not the drivers so much. The teams put them in this, in this position, NASCAR stepped up and did the right thing. And I'm, I'm happy. I think we did. Yep. I think we did what we needed. So yep. hopefully yep. we don't have to talk about action. it again. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to talk about these. Yeah. I don't want to talk about. I, you know, I want to enjoy a race weekend and yep. I don't want, I do not want to come on this podcast in the future and say, gosh, gosh, darn it. We had our first penalty. I yep. don't want to see it, but yep. I don't want to see somebody get DQ. It's Let's a nice safeguard. Stay in the it's, yeah. It's a nice safeguard though. Yep. You know, I like it. Yep. I agree. Um, Steve O'Donnell talked about the gen seven cup car this, uh, this week as well. I'm um, expected to come in 2000 or yeah, 2021 is when we will see, start seeing the Gen 7 car. Uh, more of an emphasis on similarities between consumers' cars and cup cars in both the body and the engine. Um, I know that there's been all kinds of talk from different people as to what they should do. Um, some of the teams want, or some of the manufacturers want, lighter motors. Brad Keselowski has been pushing for some sort of hybrid system. Um, who knows what we'll end up with, but that's the direction they're leaning towards. Trying to make them 
more a little bit more like production cars than a race car again because that's been the major complaint of most of the fans. So mm-hmm. now at the same time, those fans that are complaining that these aren't stock cars are going to be really ticked off when they're not running big block motors and they're running some sort of electric thing or whatever. They're the same people that wind over fuel injection. So, yes, again, these everybody wants something until they get for. what they want and then they don't get then. Yeah. So, yep. but I mean, we're then running then. we're running engine technology in these cars that is ancient. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is the same engine technology we ran in the in the 80s. You know, seventies. <laughs> it's yep. it hasn't changed much other than the fuel injection. So yeah, absolutely. And they keep, you know, they they've taken horsepower away in different ways, and yep. teams have put horsepower back in them. Yep. You know, it it's just been an ebbs and flow. And I think you know NASCAR trying to get into more standardized process. Also, this opens the door with the engine. The engine, the the car itself isn't going to be the big change. It's going to be the engine change. Yep, I agree. Because that's going to open the door for other manufacturers. With the with the reduced horsepower, you're you're bringing in, you know, you're you're opening the door for, I guess you're lowering that entry point, right? Yep. The cost to get into the sport isn't as high. Yep. So we'll see. I you know, I feel like the Gen the Gen Six hasn't been out that long, but really it's you know by the time twenty one twenty one comes around, that'll be an eight year run. Yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> I know. I know it. I was watching some old video this week and it was uh it was a video of the best Alan Bestwick calls ever. And what really got me the most is that these are I think it was the Bestwick one, or maybe it was the best finishes. No, that's what it was. It was the best finishes on every, the best finish at every track oh, in I the like Cup that. Series, every current track. The Bestwick one too, though, kind of falls in the same territory. Most of these finishes, there were a couple from. I mean, we had a couple from this past year. Chicago Land, of course, was last year's race at Chicago, but most of them were the old twisted sister car. Oh yeah, man, do I! I wish that there was a way that we could make that car safer and go back to that car. Yep, I'll tell you what, that car produced the best racing we had aero push but not like we've had it since and it just the the racing with that car was spectacular yeah i have a poster downstairs it's an old number 20 i think it's either 05 or 06 i can't remember um but it is the twisted sister mm-hmm. and that car just looks so mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what track it's just a, it's just an old Tony Stewart poster. And I don't know, it doesn't have any track or anything on it, but right. man, that thing was just wicked fast looking, <laughs> but those were cool. Yeah. I mean, and I think if we went back to that car, we'd have the same problems we have now because we wouldn't be running the car, you know, six inches off the ground on the back stretch Like we did back then we'd be at ABC a little track just like they are now. And, Oh, All yeah. the stuff we've learned would be put into that, and it, we you can't go back to what you had. But man, I miss that racing, and and I know we've had some really good racing now. And I'm not one of those purists that thinks that you know it's always was better in the past. We only remember the good stuff from the past. But the ability to pass with that car, the ability to get side by side and stuff, was pretty great. So yeah, well, shoot, well, Indianapolis used to put on decent yeah. finishes, you know, with that car. Yep. So hopefully this new package helps out with that. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Still yeah, optimistic. Yeah, I mean, we're at the point in the season where we say we say we'll see a lot, but yep. that's really where we're at. You know, yeah. we got a lot of things in flux right now. Exactly. Um, the only other real major news I, I think was uh, qualifying procedures going to be tightened up this season. Um, short tracks and inter- intermediate tracks. The first round of qualifying is going to be shortened to ten minutes instead of fifteen. Um, all the other rounds are going to stay at ten minutes. The downtime between sessions is going to be moved from five. I haven't instead of ten on the sheet here, but I think it was instead of seven. Um, previously, which after being at the track for the group qualifying and stuff a few times this year or this past year, it's a long time between sessions. I think tightening it up will help a little bit. Yeah. And that first session doesn't need to be that long either. So um, it'll, in theory, get more cars on the track at the same time, make it a little bit more exciting for the fans. Um, if we really care how exciting qualifying is, because it's still not well, that that's, exciting. Well, that's what I was just going to say. Why does qualifying have to be exciting? Because why do we? Why do we care? Because it is an entertainment business. I know, but it's not the main show. No, but why? I mean, I mean, why I shouldn't qualifying be entertaining? Yeah, but why shouldn't qualifying be entertaining, James? If but, you if you make qualifying entertainment you, entertaining, you put more people in the seats on Friday, you get more people at concession stands, people make more money, and there's it's better. 
it's not like I care what the Detroit Lions are doing on the week of practice leading up to the football game. I just want to go watch the game. I want to watch yeah. the game on TV, and I want to I want to see the final product. I don't know. Qualifying has just never been a big deal for I, me, I guess. I would like to just get rid of qualifying and run heat races. Run heat races on Friday to qualify the field. Do a do the Gatorade duels every week. Yeah. Like Budweiser duels or whatever the heck they're called now. I don't even know. Is it, it's not candy. Oh, no. It's uh, Gander Outdoors now. Is it Gander Outdoors? Okay. I think it's Gander Outdoors. Whatever. It's something different. Well, it's either Gander Outdoors, Can-Am, or Budweiser. It was a Gatorade. Well, yeah. It was a Gatorade 125s and the Gatorade duels forever. That's still the Gatorade duels to me. All right. Yes. <laughs> I still call them the twin 125s and they, they haven't run 125s in 10 years. No, no, it's been a while. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd say run heat races and quit the qualifying altogether. Start the heat races by points and see what happens. That gives yeah. them, that gets rid of the Xfinity series problem with the, with the, um, you know, backup cars and whatnot. Let them run backup cars if they wreck a car in the heat races. And there you go. Now Friday is a lot more entertaining. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. I agree. I or, don't know. I, or my other solution is get rid of qualifying altogether and have a double header Saturday, Sunday race, S- cut the race in half, take your 400 miler, run 200 miles on, on Saturday as a race, full race, 200 miles on Sunday as a race, full points, both races. Oof, there you go. You're just, going. You're, I just fixed NASCAR, man. Man, you are going radical. <laughs> and then you run those double headers as double headers on the day too. So you run an Xfinity race before the one you're in a truck race before the other. You got your full package in one weekend right there. That is so much change for the NASCAR fan base, Eric. I don't know. Their heads might explode. Can you imagine how great that would be, though? It would help, like it would help your attendance on Saturday, like you would think. Even if we only did that a couple times a year, like they do at you know, IndyCar yeah. in uh, Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, I think the, the um, double headers for IndyCar have worked out really well. I mean, make, that would make Pocono more fun. Yeah. Michigan would be more fun. Mm-hmm. That's the way yeah, to do not it. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. There you go. Save NASCAR. Call the brass, man. Yep. If anybody, if NASCAR is listening, <laughs> there you go. Get, you got your guy right there here. There you go. All set. Um, any other news? Like I said, Jayski shut down. ESPN shut Jayski yeah, down. Pour, we, should we pour one out for? Do you have a little sounder of a, of a beer cracking open? We can pour one out for Jayski. I I don't have a sound of a beer cracking. I have this. That's close enough. <laughs> Or, that's about how we felt. Yeah, well, this is this is how I feel about ESPN. There you go. <laughs> uh, ESPN cleaned their cleaned their NASCAR house. No kidding, man. Craven's no, no gone. Pocris yep. is gone. Jayski's gone. <sighs> I don't, both Cra- I don't know. both Craven and Pocris ended up at Fox Sports, didn't they? They did. They both went to Fox. That's good. Uh, I haven't seen what Bob's printing yet, because mm. uh, Fox Sports' website's really terrible yeah. and it's all video. Okay. Um, and I've been looking for Bob's pieces, but I'll keep on the lookout. Maybe he doesn't have anything quite yet. I don't know what their what their plan is, but right. Um, yeah, Jayski. Wow, hmm. that's an institution right there. I feel like I think I texted this to you though. I don't think we've seen the end of Jayski. Yeah, that's possible. I I just feel like it's not dead. My thing is, is that I don't know how I'm going to do the show notes now, because generally I would just go on J ski and <laughs> take the news from the last week, put that into the show notes and then look on a couple other sites to check and see if I missed anything. But usually yeah. I could get most everything off J ski. So now I got to actually work on these show notes. And you know, J ski's heyday was probably what, 10 years ago. Oh yeah. J ski site hasn't been what it's, what it was for several years. Yeah. But it was still a resource that right. everybody used, yeah. and ESPN bought the thing five five years ago or so. I mean, it. it yeah. Yeah, it's it stinks. You know, you lose one of those institutions like that. But you know, the the sport has changed a lot in a lot of different ways, and so many things are. There's just so many things that are different. It's just I think we've gotten. Maybe it's just me. I've gotten numb to the change sometimes. Yeah. And Jayski went down. I was kind of like, oh, well, there's just another thing. Right. You know? Yeah. There's a lot of change in this series right now. That's for sure. But uh, yeah. keep on going. We'll just, we'll start our own Jayski. Yeah. That's why I, <laughs> I think, yeah. I think it exists already. It's called Reddit. Yeah. My wife would kill me if I yeah. had to put that much time into something. I know. I other, know. other than uh, my job and my family. That would. <laughs> right. <laughs> that'd be it. That would be it for me. Yep. A um, couple other things, too, with the announcement of the qualifying tweaks. Um, NASCAR announced their participation guidelines pretty much the same as last year. However, 
if you run in a truck series race or an Xfinity race with a cup series driver, the owner does not get points this season. So that's interesting. Um, previously the owner would get points, but the driver would not if they weren't registered running that series. So, um, Ben Kennedy getting a bigger leadership role in, uh, NASCAR. Uh, let's see. What is he now? I'm should have probably been a little more prepared for this. I don't know. Ben Kennedy's getting a bigger role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. He's, the article's um, in the show notes. Read it. <laughs> he's making his way up the ranks. Yeah. And uh, NASCAR is going to have its own set of officials dedicated to each national tour. So you won't have Cup Series officials officiating the Xfinity Series, et cetera. So. That's the one thing NASCAR does have better than the NFL is the uh, actually have decent officials. Yeah. I will say. I will say. Yeah. I don't know. I was pretty happy that the NFL officials kept the Saints from the Super Bowl because. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I did not want them in the Super Bowl. I hate there's there's fan bases that I despise and you're familiar. You are very familiar with one of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the saints fan base, what a bunch of whiners going to the super bowl crying. Get out of here. Yep. Oh uh, yeah. Suing the NFL because of a saints bad right call. There. Oh, Come yeah. on. That sounds like the new Orleans saints and the petitions and the people that legit thought they were going to replay the, the playoff game. Like, come Just on, get out of here. <laughs> so but dumb. you know, it's funny because the saints fans, none of them, not a single one was complaining about all the calls that went in their favor throughout the season. Right. <laughs> I know. And it's like they had the ball at the end of the game. You should have, I mean, don't leave it up to one call. There if you you're go. so good, if you're so good, put the game away when you're supposed to. There you go. That's football. Who uh. is a bigger star, bigger legend in their sport? Jimmy Johnson in NASCAR or Tom Brady in the NFL? As far as I don't know, just who's the biggest? Sport? Yes, in their sport, who is the biggest legend in their sport? And Tom is, Brady's a supernova. I know I can't stand him either, but I respect what he's done. He is Jimmy Johnson. He is and Jimmy. Jimmy Johnson is Tom Brady. Yeah, but Tom Tom Brady is also. Well, I Jimmy's don't know. done Jimmy? the same thing that Brady's done. Jimmy has managed to Jimmy's to pull through when when he shouldn't. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Jimmy. They both have they both have a handful of cheating scandals in their path, <laughs> and questionable crew chiefs and coaches. Right. <laughs> it's Jim, a pretty good parallel. Maybe Jimmy ranks a little bit higher. I will say this: Jimmy Johnson has the seventh championship. Right. So therefore, inside of the NASCAR realm, he <laughs> is more successful than Tom Brady. Yeah. Now, when you look at the. Uh, at the bigger lens, it's not close. It's Tom Brady, but I mean, if you I, look I, at, I we're talking the same era. Their resumes are pretty much the same, and they are in the most competitive eras of each of their sports. Right, but I mean, and, and it's it's the same era because Jimmy, when was his his first season? Was two thousand two, right? Yep, and his and, first championship was oh five, and Brady so, won his oh, first six. championship in oh one, right? Yeah, Brady's championship came in 01, and yeah. then Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy busted down the scene right after that. So we're talking pretty, pretty parallel careers. Pretty interesting. Yeah. I never, I just came up with this here, James. This is really good. <laughs> no, you've really got me because you're right in my wheelhouse. I like, <laughs> I, big Tom Brady fan. I, I hope he has all the success in the world. I am not a Tom Brady fan, but I also hope he has all the success in the no, world. <laughs> Well, and part of, well, and Jimmy Johnson may be on the downswing, and eventually this Patriots thing has to come to an end. I just you don't know when. So. And we said that about we said that about Johnson forever. Yeah, I don't think but, he's on the downswing yet either. I think he's going to come out this year and show prove some people wrong. Yeah. How many times have we said Jimmy's on his way out, and then Jimmy wins a championship? Come on. Yeah, that 2016 championship still is something. Yep. Yeah. He's never been there and figured it out. I don't know how he did it. Yep. That's a really good that's a really good question. <laughs> Should have can't, had that in the off season. Of course bad, the Super Bowl hadn't happened yet, so you, yeah, you could do parallels with other athletes like LeBron James, but LeBron James loses so much that you can't compare <laughs> I had to get my shot in there. There you go. I'm good. You can take a shot at anybody in basketball, James, because basketball good. it's not even a real sport. Oof. <laughs> the kids love it. The kids love basketball. Yeah. Millennials or not? Not well. Who's after us? We're the millennials. I don't know. The next generation, the whatever. Millennials, I think they call them. God, we're going off the rails. Terrible. All well, right. it's, it's a typical podcast. So we're we're in mid-season form. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All 
<laughs> All right, so let's get back on track. It is the Advanced Auto Parts Clash this Saturday night, right? It is still Saturday night or Saturday. It's Saturday afternoon, day, right? Three yeah, o'clock. that's right. Three o'clock. That's right. Oh crap! I scheduled something for the day on Saturday. I really screwed up. All right, so twenty drivers will participate in the event this year. They are the the way the field is stacked is as follows. Um, all pole award winners from 2018, former Clash winners who competed uh, full time last season, former Daytona 500 winners, and all drivers who qualified for the playoffs in 2018. Um, your drivers will include Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, Austin Dillon, Kevin Harvick, Ryan Newman, Chase Elliott, Eric Almarola, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, Clint Boyer, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., Eric Jones, Paul Menard, Joey Ooh. Logano, <laughs> uh, Jamie McMurray. Daniel Suarez, Kyle Larson, Jimmy Johnson, and Alex Bowman. Those are your 20 drivers. Um, 75 lap race, competition caution at lap 25. Otherwise, no gimmicks. That's what you got. What do you Round think? Em. So I have a question, James. Does this race tell us anything? About... No, it's just fun. Okay. No, you know what this race is? I don't it's even the think... opening. Go ahead. It's the opening parade. It's just the parade. Yeah. It's the parade for the upcoming season. I don't think this race even tells you anything about the race the following weekend. No, it doesn't tell you crap. It helps a little bit because it's during the day now, but not really because a chances are, they're probably not going to run these cars and B it's you're, you're talking a short shootout. That's going to be a complete wreck fest. Cause it has been yep. multiple years. Um, I, it's, it's a completely different deal. And, and I, even historically, right. The drivers who have won this race are not the front runners for the 500. I will say though, I'm looking at the old I'm looking at the old results here. Okay. And the last three winners are all road are all uh, restrictor plate ringers: Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, and Brad Keselowski. And last year's race was definitely a sign of the times because the top five, the first four, were all Fords and all really good restrictor plate racers. I mean, Ryan Blaney finished fourth, and he was legit about to win the 500 last year if things kind of broke differently for him. Right. So I guess maybe I'll step back and say you might learn something. Hmm. It might not be exactly what you think, but, and and you may have to think about it in retrospect, but right. Yeah. I mean, good restricted plate drivers will get to the front and you know, the Fords have been so dang fast on these restricted plates um, over the years, but yeah, but Fords are completely different this year. Fords are a little different this year, yes. So, um, this is the last restrictor plate race that, well, Daytona 500 will be, but this is one of the last restrictor plate races we will have. Right. I'm surprised they they they, they didn't run the tapered spacer in this clash. To, that is to learn interesting from. that they didn't. That's a good point. Why didn't they? I don't know. That is odd. Huh? Are they not ready for the restrictor plate program to have tapered spacer yet? Maybe, Until maybe not. Maybe I mean they haven't tested it yet on a restrictor plate, right? They are testing after is it after the 500? I believe. I know so there's a test. That's there why then they they haven't tested it yet. This would have been a great opportunity to test it. It would have been, would have been excellent. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Um, James, you get first pick on this one. Who who are you going with? I I didn't put dark horses on here because there's really no dark horses. There's no, is, yeah, it's there's no chance of a dark horse. I mean, well, we there's could... in theoretically they're all you know pretty eligible. Oh, Paul Menard. Paul Menard, Daniel Suarez, Jamie. Yeah, no, Jamie Mack is is um, legit. You know who I like for this race? I will go Ryan Blaney. Hmm. That's a good pick. Yeah, it's a little bit of a dark horse pick, but he was really good at restricted plates last year. Oh, I'll go Ryan Blaney. I was really hoping that you were going to pick one of my two. Well, I always pick Brad, and not to foreshadow next week we'll, we'll, we'll see i want to see a little bit more during the clash right yeah i was kind of hoping you'd pick one of my two so it would make my decision easier i am gonna go god dang it <laughs> i don't know which way to go <laughs> well, i'll tell you what's well, on my list I'll, I'll filibuster for you for a minute okay um if i was gonna pick anybody i had a handful of guys to go through uh, Logano would have been one. Mm -hmm. I would have went with Brad, obviously, uh, and Denny Hamlin. Mm -hmm. I think those are some of the stronger ones um, out there. I, I don't know. That's too funny because none of those are my picks, either <laughs> of pick. 
Well, you know what? We're not even talking about Eric Jones, who won the most recent race at Daytona. That's true. He's also not one of my picks. All right, so here's the Dylan who won the 500. Also year. not one of my picks. All right, here's my pick. I'm going Kyle Busch. I like Kyle Busch in a shootout style race. He's had success in this race before. Um, he's also been caught up in trouble many times in this race. But I'm going KB. My alternate choice, my second choice was Chase Elliott. And I don't know why. I just was leaning that direction. But I'm going Kyle Busch. I like it. I thought you were going to save him for uh, for uh, the 500. I don't think Kyle's going to win the 500. Ever? I don't know. I don't. I don't. Is he going to be a Stewart and go over? I think he might be. I He just cannot get luck in that race. I'm looking at Kyle Busch's finishes. I want to see where he's what he's done in the clash. Second in 2017. He won one of them. Yeah, he won that the... one where he spun out twice in the race and still won it. Yeah. What year was that? I think that was the one that Gordon flipped in. So it was back when Gordon was still running. Yeah, I don't see where it's at on here. Uh, but there's a lot of exhibition races on Racing Reference. So I'm trying to f- find my way through. Either way. Positive. Yeah, there, it. yeah there's, there's been a few where he's been pretty good he's won some uh some uh 125 or 150s oh, those were in his late model too all these exhibition races blend together the denny hamlin short track showdown he's won that a bunch of times I'm going if you want to know. different direction here than you i don't think he's got one i thought he did oh yeah here you go um kyle bush won in 2012 Right? Yes. 2012, he won it. And that might be it. <laughs> yeah, 2012 was his win in the Clash. Well, I believe go. that was the year that Gordon flipped because I remember. I do remember that, yeah. I remember he spun out in that crash. He's the one who started that crash. He spun on the inside. The rear end sparked all crazy. Everybody wrecked behind him trying to miss him, and that's when Gordon flipped. Yes. And then yes. there was another instance in that same race where he spun, got sideways, and saved it. And that was his win. So, but yeah, I'm going Kyle Bush. The KB show. KB show. So, no, I don't, I don't, I don't like his luck in the 500. I just think that he struggles in that race. And he's, it's not even like, it's not like Dale Jr. when Dale Jr. was snake, snake bitten there, where Dale would run really good all day and be in position and then wreck with 20 to go. Yeah. Kyle just is usually done like the first caution. Yeah, he just I mean, when I went there for the 500, he literally was the first caution. He spun immediately. And it just I mean, it, it I don't know. It's just not his place for some reason. Daytona yeah. really isn't his place, but he's got a couple of wins, I think, in the in the 400, at least one. Right. No, he got yeah. wrecked in the one. Yeah, because Stewart wrecked him. Well, he wrecked himself on Stewart's front. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that one was yeah. all Kyle. But yeah. <laughs> Um, Stewart yeah, says, was, "Don't block him, man. Don't that's block right. him. Don't block him. Don't block <laughs> him." Um, yeah, Tony Stewart was that way at Daytona too. He won a whole bunch of races, yeah. similar to Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, Earnhardt uh, won every race there was to win there until he won the until, 500. Yeah, and Stewart, I thought that was Stewart's destiny for a long time, and he had some really great runs at Daytona. He should he should have won in 08, um, and he was there in 04. Yeah, but he had a couple really stupid ones where his engine just blew on like the first five laps. Yeah. Or he wrecked Kurt Busch when they – him and Kurt were the fastest things out there that day. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I remember that yeah. one. Um, you know, a lot of people hate on Chocolate Myers because all he talks about is Earnhardt. But I think he's the best source for Earnhardt stories. And he was talking about when they won in 98 out there. And Earnhardt comes – the caution comes out. Earnhardt comes racing back to the, to the white flag and the caution flag. And the team is just cheering. We won. We won. He's like, hold on a minute. We've been <laughs> leading going into turn three on the last lap multiple times. Like, don't get excited. He's got to get back around here to win the race. So I thought that was kind of funny. I, I like chocolate stories, even though yeah. even though they're all about Earnhardt. I like the Earnhardt stories. So um, anything else to say about this race, James? We get just get cars yeah, back on the track. I'm, yeah, I'm just excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any shout outs this week? Um, Todd for being the first to sign up for our fantasy league, which I'll get into in just a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's he's good, always he's always a go getter. But that's a good transition. Uh, yeah, nobody specific. Um, we well, I'm sure we'll have a few come you know coming in as as we get going in here in the season though. Yep. 
Um, I don't have any either. So go ahead and transition yourself into our fantasy league. Yeah. So I posted on our Facebook page today. Um, you know, fantasy seasons here and I made a few changes per, per Eric's suggestion. <laughs> uh, we moved it over to NASCAR.com's uh, fantasy live. So the rules are a little different for us this year. Um, you can make some changes during the race if your guy crashes out or something, you know, things like that. Um, but if you want to sign up, go to our Facebook page. All the information is there. I, I also put uh, all the information in the show notes. But uh, just look for the Super Speedway as it, that's our league. And the password is all one word, the Super Speedway 2019. Um, capitalize the T8 or just the T in the and then the two S's, Super Speedway. There you go. Yeah, come join us. I'm I'm back in this year. I quit halfway yep. through the season last year, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one since James Todd's switched over for kick, me. Yep, yep. Todd's back to kick our butts. Yeah, Todd will probably win. Todd reached out to me a couple weeks ago and asked if we were gonna do it, and I'm like, eh, he's gonna kick my butt again. So let's <laughs> let's do it. Let's get I'm some in. more people in here. So if you're listening to the podcast, you want to join the fantasy league, join up join up with us. We'd love to have you and uh, and give Todd some competition because James and I yeah. certainly are not that. Yeah, no, it, it, it's just a fun way to interact with our, you know, with our, uh, our listeners. Hopefully there's a, there's a bunch of you out there that want to play. If you, if you're interested, if you're already doing it, just bring your team over to our league too. Yep. Uh, you can have, I think up to five different teams or something like that. So, um, yeah, do it. All the rules are right there. I, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of the rules, but, uh, yeah, just check it out. There you go. Um, yeah. I don't remember what I was going to say. Never mind. Right. Uh, with that, uh, 2019 season is here. Uh, we start with the shootout this weekend, and then we and then we head on to the uh, or the clash this weekend. Sorry, it's not the shootout anymore; it's the clash. Uh, yep. Then we had the da- Daytona 500. I have I am in the process of finalizing my 2019 travel schedule as far as race coverage. Um, I'll go through what the plan is right now, so you guys are aware. I'm hoping to start the season early this year for myself. April, uh, head to Bristol Motor Speedway. Uh, for the cup race out there fingers crossed that that works out um, I do have credentials already so I'm all set there uh, the only question mark is, is it will be playoff season for the hockey team that I cover and hopefully they don't have any home games that weekend because if they do I might have to go that direction instead of NASCAR so we'll see what happens there so Bristol is up in the air uh, Michigan in June in June is a definite I'll be down there for the Firekeepers Casino 400 uh, June Later in June gets a little iffy again, working between either doing the truck Xfinity weekend at Iowa on June 15th and 16th or the cup truck uh, Xfinity weekend at Chicago um, uh, the week later. Don't know which one that's going to be yet. I'm leaning towards Iowa. If Bristol happens, it's Iowa. If Bristol doesn't happen, it's probably Chicago. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, Kentucky is finalized July 11th through 13th. I'll be at Kentucky motor speedway for the trucks Xfinity and cup series as I did last year. And then heading to Michigan international speedway again in August to finish out the season, skipping the trucks at Eldora this year, which is a bit of a bummer, but, yeah. but it's time, it's time to move on to something different. So I wanted to, I wanted to change it up a little bit this year. You went my, to everyone. <laughs> yeah. My hope Pretty is good. My hope is to, to get Iowa and Bristol in there as a couple different ones and see how that goes. So that's the plan. That's what uh, you guys can expect for coverage this year. Um, if you want to see more, uh, hit up Patreon, sign up, get us get us to more tracks. We'll go. I'll go. All I got to do is sign up for the credentials, and I'm in. So um, just need the travel costs. So but we appreciate everything, everybody following along, and you'll get all kinds of NASCAR coverage this year, some inside stuff, hopefully some more podcast guests. Uh, throughout the season, I'm going to work on trying to get some drivers as well, um, which we haven't been able to do yet, but we'll work on it. So we see how that get goes. Him. Yep. Yeah, we can get him. <sighs> With that, I think that's it for the show, James. I don't, is yeah. there anything else? Well, I think uh, just a little preview for next week. We'll we'll probably yeah. do our annual Make Ourselves Look Stupid podcast <laughs> yeah, we where we do that. predictions for the, for the season. Yes. Yeah. Remember that year? What was the first year we did this? Remember we were laughing? Yeah. Um, you had you had played back my prediction. Right. <laughs> and I was so adamant that Kevin Harvick was going to just run away with it. And that was the year they switched to Ford. And it was yep. he was not. He did make a nice run for the championship, but <laughs> it, was, it was that was a rough one. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we'll do that again next week. We'll just kind of we'll go through our playoff picks and um, maybe we'll do a preseason champion. You know, we do that every year. So, yep. 
something we can something we can look forward to and then we'll preview the 500 there you go that's all coming up next week uh this weekend we go racing at daytona international speedway the advanced auto parts clash can't wait to get cars back out on the track and uh get something to talk about on here instead of filling time with whatever else we can come up with so <laughs> yeah so we'll be back next week to talk about the clash we'll preview the daytona 500 and we'll preview the 2019 season until then everybody let's go racing uh-huh.